Chemistry lecture number 87, chemical equilibrium and the equilibrium constant. Hydrogen and iodine gas will react to form hydrogen iodide. H2, hydrogen gas and iodine gas form hydrogen iodide. Now after being made, the hydrogen iodide will react to form hydrogen and iodine gas. So this product then reacts to reform these two products. Two hydrogen iodides react to form hydrogen and iodine gas. Now this reaction here, it's just the reverse of the first reaction. So this is just this written in reverse. So the above, example are, the above are examples of reversible reactions. And these are reactions where after the products are made, the products can react and produce the original reactants. To indicate that a reaction is reversible, you draw two arrows pointed in opposite directions instead of a single arrow. So H2 plus I2 and then this top arrow says forms 2HI, and then 2HI can then react to form H2 and I2. So that's what the second arrow on the bottom pointing the opposite direction means. So the reaction from left to right, H2 plus I2 gives 2HI is the forward reaction, and the reaction from right to left, 2HI forms H2 and I2, is the reverse reaction. So forward reaction, reverse reaction. If the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction, the system is in equilibrium. At equilibrium, the amount of product and reactant stays the same or stays constant. A chemical system in equilibrium is similar to cars moving back and forth between two parking lots. Let's say there are two lots, lot R and lot P. Lot R has three cars in it and lot P has six cars in it. Every time a car from lot R leaves and moves into lot P, a car from lot P leaves and moves into lot R. So here's a picture of all that. Two parking lots, lot R and lot P. And here we have a car from lot R going into lot P, and at the exact same time, a car from lot P is going into lot R. All right, so in a sense, we have a system in equilibrium the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. And then what happens after this one moves here and this one moves here? Well, you get a picture like this. Three cars here and six cars here. So there's been no change in the number of cars um, when the cars uh, move back and forth like this. Um, it's an equilibrium. Okay. Now, under these conditions, the total number of cars in lot R will stay constant at 3, and the total number of cars in lot P will stay constant at 6. If the number of cars in each lot stays the same, stays constant, then the ratio of cars in each lot will also be constant. If the number of cars in lot R is expressed as R, and the number of cars in lot P is expressed as P, then the ratio of P to R will equal a constant K. So K equals P over R. And in this particular case, the value of K will always be 2 since P divided by R is going to be 6 divided by 3, which will be equal to 2. For any reversible reaction at equilibrium, the ratio of products to reactants at a certain temperature will always equal a constant K. So in general, K is going to be equal to the concentration of products on top, divided by the concentration of reactants on the bottom. And when you divide these concentrations, you're always going to get a constant value in general. More specifically, for any reversible reaction at equilibrium, so we have this chemical and this chemical reacting to produce these products, uh, the equilibrium constant, Keq, is expressed as C, so the concentration of this product raised to the coefficient in front of it, the concentration of that product raised to the coefficient little d in front of it, divided by the concentration of the reactants on the bottom. Concentration of A raised to the little a power. Concentration of B raised to the coefficient in front of B. Okay, so we've got products on top here and reactants on the bottom here. So let's try a problem. H2 plus I2 gives 2HI. So the above reaction occurs in a container which has the following concentration of reactants and products at equilibrium. 
So the amount of H2 is 0.114 molar. The amount of I2 is also 0.114 molar. The amount of hydrogen iodide is 0.772. And the question they ask is, find the value of the equilibrium constant. All right, well, the equilibrium constant is roughly the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants. So what we do is, on top, we're going to write uh, the concentration of the products. So here's the products. This is the product right here. And then these are the reactants. All right, so KEQ is going to be concentration of the product raised to the coefficient in front of it. So there's a two in front of it, so we put a two there. All right. And on the bottom, we put the concentration of the reactants, H2. Implicitly, there's a one in front of the H2, so we could put raised to the one. We don't have to. And then I2. Implicitly, there's a one in front of this one. All right, so that's what we have here. Okay, so the equilibrium constant is HI squared over H2 times I2. And then you just fill in the numbers. So, concentration of HI, 0.772 squared. Concentration of H2, 0.114. Concentration of I2, also 0.114. So, this number squared divided by the product of these numbers is 45.9. So that's the value of the equilibrium constant. So at equilibrium, the value of KEQ for this reaction will always be 45.9. If we know the value of KEQ, we can solve for the concentration of product or reactant. So in the first problem, um, we were given the concentration of the products and reactants, and we had to solve for KEQ. On the next one, uh, they're going to give us KEQ, and then we have to find either the products or the reactants. All right. So, let's do the next one. So here's our chemical reaction. 3H2 plus N2 gives 2NH3, and this reaction is going forward and backward. So the above reaction is at equilibrium, and it has a KEQ equal to 6 times 10 to the negative 2. Concentration of H2 is 0 0.0250 molar, and that of NH3 is 0 0.0500 molar. Find the concentration of N2. So the first thing we need to do is we need to write an expression for the equilibrium constant. And the equilibrium constant is going to be products over reactants. So KEQ is the products. So here's the product right here. And so it's going to be the concentration of NH3 squared, because there's a 2 in front of it. And now on the bottom, we're going to put the concentration of the reactants, H2 raised to the third power, because there's a 3 in front of it, and then concentration of N2. All right. <clears throat> so that's how you write the equilibrium constant expression. Now let's substitute the numbers they give us. Well, they tell us that KEQ is 6 times 10 to the negative 2. Concentration of NH3, that's 0.05. Concentration of H2 is 0.025, so that goes there, and that's cubed. And we're trying to find the concentration of N2, so we don't know that. All right, so that's our equation, and N2 is our unknown. So if we were to rearrange this equation to solve for N2, you could do it by cross-multiplying, you know, just do that, and then cross-multiply and solve for N2. Uh, you'd end up with N2 equals 0 0.0500 squared divided by 0 0.250 cubed times 6 times 10 to the negative 2. So if you multiply all this out and solve for this fraction, you would get concentration of N2 is 2.64 molar. So what that means is that if the concentration of H2 and NH3 are 0.25 and 0 0.05 and it's an equilibrium, then the concentration of N2 has to be 2.67. All right. Some more uh, information about KEQ. Um, if the equilibrium constant is greater than 1, then there's more product than a reactant. And this is because the numerator, or the products in the above fraction, is larger than the denominator. So if the number on top is bigger than the number on the bottom, it's going to be greater than 1. So that means there has to be more product and less reactant. 
Now, if the KEQ is less than one, uh, there's more reactant than product. And that's because uh, the denominator, or the number on the bottom, the reactants is larger than the numerator, the number on top. So if you get a fraction where uh, that's less than one, it means the number on the bottom is bigger than the number on top. So in this case, the number on the bottom is more product, the number on top is less reactant. So if we look at the last problem, um, the KEQ is six times 10 to the negative two. So this tells us that um, there's more uh, reactant than product. There's more H2 and N2 than there is NH3. And then the other problem we did, we've solved uh, for the KEQ, it's 45.9. So that tells you there's more uh, product than there is reactant. Okay. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 87, chemical equilibrium and the equilibrium constant.